Welcome to the Persecution Report. I'm Greg Musselman. Coming up, three more Christians die in military camps in Eritrea. Also, more than a dozen Christian women, men, and teenagers were brutally beaten in Vietnam. Later, these brothers were forced to leave Iran because of their evangelistic work. Now these former Muslims have continued their ministry in neighboring Iraq. Uh, he said, uh, according to the Quran law and according to the law that had been made in Ira Iranian parliament, you should be executed and you should be died because you change your background and you are like dirty and there's, you should be removed. Those stories and more are coming up on the Persecution Report. Denied their most basic needs for survival, three Christians have died in Eritrean military camps. Two Christian women passed away in a military camp in western Eritrea as they were confined in a dungeon-like cell intended for religious prisoners. 28-year-old Turhas and 21-year-old Ferwini, both employees of a wholesale store, were arrested during a prayer meeting in 2009 at a private home. After two years of physical military torture and the denial of medical care, the women succumbed to starvation and poor health. 26-year-old Angusom also died in an Eritrean military camp after serving two years. He contracted severe malaria but was denied medical treatment because of his refusal to recant his Christian faith. Eritrea has a history of severely mistreating Christians and is known as one of the worst nations for Christian persecution. When I was let out, my hair was long and my nails were long. I looked like another creature. My body color was yellow. Once I was beaten by three guards who beat me until they were tired. I was bleeding from my nose and mouth and I lost consciousness. It's by God's grace and mercy that this body is now able to work properly. In prison, truly the outer body suffers, but in my inner man I received the vision of the Lord for my life. God revealed his mysteries to me and great spiritual insights. Always I heard his voice. One Christian leader in the African nation said that all of Eritrea's senior evangelical pastors are in prison. They have been there for many years now and haven't even had a trial. Some estimate that over 3,000 believers are currently being held in shipping containers or at military jails. And you can view the entire video by going to persecution.tv, click on video features, then Eritrea. More than a dozen Christian men, women and teenagers were brutally beaten and their property destroyed near Hanoi, Vietnam in a religiously motivated attack. The Christian house church leaders, as well as the other assembled believers, were severely injured during a gathering in the home of Pastor Nguyen Dan Chow in Le Teo village. A gang burst into the home and warned Pastor Nguyen that they would kill him if he continued gathering Christians. The attackers then beat him until he lost consciousness. The gang then smashed chairs, overturned a pulpit, tore down a cross from the wall and threw it into a nearby pond. They also destroyed motorcycles owned by four of the pastors present, which was an enormous loss for them. At least 45 Christians were murdered by Muslim herdsmen and soldiers in Nigeria. Unfounded allegations of cattle theft preceded the attacks, according to Christian leaders in Plateau State, and thousands of vulnerable and unarmed Christians fled the area in fear, leaving churches largely empty on the Sunday following the attacks. Homes were burned, churches were closed, and many Christians were also maimed or injured. Muslims also reportedly moved into the farms belonging to the Christians who had fled and then destroyed their crops. Witnesses say Fulani Muslim herdsmen were shouting Allah Akbar, which means God is great. During the same time, Muslim militants helped members of the Islamic terrorist group Boko Haram destroy five church buildings in Nigeria's increasingly dangerous Yobe state, displacing about 700 Christians. <laughs> Buddhist nationals in Sri Lanka have caused concern among Protestant Christians by renewing their calls for anti-conversion laws. The JHU party, which has been pushing for legislation banning forced conversion since 2004, renewed its campaign in a recent press statement. It called on the government to reintroduce to Parliament the Prohibition of Religious Conversions Bill. 
Sources inside Sri Lanka say Christians are also concerned about a loosely worded circular from the Ministry of Religious Affairs which stipulates that building or maintaining places of worship must be sanctioned by prior approval of the ministry. According to the sources, evangelical churches in particular are facing increased pressure from the state with indiscriminate closure and threats. Christian-owned businesses were burned to the ground recently as unprecedented violence erupted against Christians in Iraq's Kurdish region. Local sources say the attacks were organized by a pro-Islamic political party. The attackers waved flags that said, There is no God but Allah. A sermon by a mullah claiming there was moral corruption in the northern town of Zako seemed to be the trigger for a group of young Muslim men to attack the businesses. The following day, two more Christian neighborhoods were attacked, with businesses being burned, reportedly organized by the Kurdistan Islamic Union Party. The violence continued in other nearby regions for several days. The Kurdish region of Iraq has been relatively secure in spite of all the violence in other parts of the country, which is why the two men in our next report fled Iran after their Christian activities caught the attention of the government there. Now they're spreading the message of God's love to the Kurds in Iraq who have fled to the north in the war-torn country. Their ministry is filled with many challenges and danger. Nader and Aram lead a house church in Iraqi Kurdistan and are also doing significant ministry to Kurdish refugees, especially those in the camps. They are passionate about bringing the hope of Christ to those who are without hope because they know what it's like. Nader and Aram are brothers, and they grew up in a Muslim family in the unstable and volatile country of Iran. Their world as they knew it would change forever after Aram was seriously injured in a car accident in the year 2000. His body was badly injured, and he suffered severe head trauma. The then 19-year-old says he literally died at the hospital and encountered God. I felt in peace. It was amazing unbelievable peace. Then, on that time, I went back to my body and I saw the people around me and also the doctor, they tried to bring me back to the life. They had the things like the shock, electric shock to uh, put it on my breast and bring me back. And the monitor was like, this line was straight and it came again. Aram says that's where his story with the God of Heaven began. He had more dreams and visions and eventually began a relationship with Jesus. He shared his experience with his brother and Nader too had an encounter with the Lord and decided to follow Christ as well. By 2003, Nader and Aram were active in reaching Iranian Kurdish Muslims with the gospel and that caught the attention of government officials. The brothers were harassed and threatened in order to get them to stop their Christian activity. So they fled Iran and came here to Iraqi Kurdistan. So many, people, many youth people, they came and joined the group. So they find out about that and they were trying to find all these people through us and we escaped. Aram and Nader were missing their family, but their Christian faith was deepening and so was their desire to serve Christ. After being baptized in 2004, the brothers and some of their friends started a house church and were sharing the gospel with Kurdish Muslims, many who came from Iran. When we tried to convert people, the Iranian government, they find out about us, then they didn't like it. And they make a lot of pressure on my family to bring us back to Iran. So the Iranian government arrested their father and tried to force him to convince Aram and Nader to return to Iran. Their father refused and as a result was beaten up and tortured. After beating him up hard, when he released from the jail after 10, 10 days or a week, he's dead. What you did that your father is died. So yeah, you will feel guilty. It was a really hard time. We were under pressure and harassed and missing our family and our dad. But we also had happiness inside and we had Christ. He appeared and said, I am your heavenly father. Nader and Aram have been kidnapped three times and taken to the Iranian consul in Iraq, accused of being spies because of their Christian activity. On the first occasion, a government official from Iran threatened them. Uh, he said, 
according to the Quran law and according to the law that had been made in Ira Iranian parliament, you should be executed and you should be die because you change your background and you are like dirty on the earth. You should be removed. Nader's wife, Catherine, and her family are from Baghdad and have experienced firsthand the wrath of Al-Qaeda. The Islamic terrorist organization bombed their church and many other church buildings in the Iraqi capital. The family is now living in northern Iraq in a house with other families, including Nader and Aram's widowed mother. Catherine says, we have hope, but we have no future, expressing the uncertainty and despair shared by many Iraqi Christians. In spite of the threats and danger, Nader and Aram will continue to bring the gospel to the Kurds and anyone else who will listen. Because I have a very powerful and strong person behind me and giving me backup, and that is Jesus Christ. Wow, what amazing faith and courage. Nader and Aram, two incredible young men, and they are paying a huge price to do their ministries in Iraq, and they are seeing some amazing results. I'll continue to pray for these brothers and also for Christians in Iran, Iraq, Eritrea, Nigeria, Vietnam, and around the world. Remember, when one part of the body suffers, we all suffer. Thanks for watching the Persecution Report. Goodbye and God bless. For more information on the ministry of the Voice of the Martyrs and ways in which you can help the persecuted church, please visit our website at persecution.net. That's persecution.net.